Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a features overview and just kind of a walkthrough of Logic Pro X's new drum instrument, the Drum Machine Designer. It came out with the update for 10.1. It's a free update to all you new, new users. And if you guys have used the, uh, the drummer or the drum track, or whatever you guys want to call it, it'll be very, very familiar. It's basically the same idea, just using Ultrabeat actually as the brains. So I have a little groove made using some custom samples. And I actually have never before this, I've never, I never really used, uh, if you go to track, new drummer track, I never used the drummer, uh, like the rock or alternative drummer, because I, I just was really put off by the names. I thought it was ridiculous. Uh, if you guys are just starting out though, or you're a songwriter and you're not a producer, this stuff's really cool. Because you can write songs and scratch track to this, which is awesome. So I'm not taking away from that element of it at all. So with Drum Machine Designer, uh, it's basically geared towards EDM, electronic, hip-hop, R&B style. So you have R&B, electronic, and hip-hop. So if you load up electronic, you have the different names. Uh, the different names correlate to slightly different styles, like uh, this guy, Jester. I, don't, I can't even read that. Um, it's kind of very... It's dubstep. Right? Underground dubstep. Uh, you have the same thing. You have this matrix where you can control how complex the grooves are and all that. So it's very similar. You have these different presets that you can um, you can you can kind of go through. So it's very similar. You have in total you have let me change this drummer. You have five new drummers for the electronic. Uh, this Magnus is kind of the main room. Uh, really popular EDM that's going on right now. Let's look at Leah. Let's just demo some of her. Very, she's very housey. Sounds like just types of different types of house music. All right, let's look at. Let's go back. We already went to Jester. He Jess, I, Jasper. I don't even know his name. Um, <laughs> I cannot read that. And it's it's ED it's EDM style underground dubstep. So let's go back to. Let's look at Ronnie. I believe it is. Let's listen to his. So he, he's very underground dubstep. And they give you this little uh, description of it, which is which is nice. But I guess the names are just, they've always put me off. Let's look at Julian. Very just, you know, classic club tech type stuff there. So there are the electronic drummers. Let's look at some of the R&B drummers here. So you have Rose. That sounds terrible to me. I don't, I, I think that's a really bad sound. I'm just going to be honest. Um, I would never use it in an R&B production. Curtis, let's look at this. That's all right if it was like layered with other samples. It just already sounds kind of dated to my ear. It just sounds like that's kind of cool. Um, the Motown vibe. So you have you have uh, Benny. He was pretty cool. Let's look at the hip hop. You have three hip hop drummers, or basically you're gonna have three different flavors. You have, and I'm not at a tempo conducive to this. I'm at an EDM tempo right now. But let me double time. So you have Dirty South, Hip Hop, can be used for certain types of trap. Let's look at here, let's load up. Uh... So this is kind of like a East Coast, modern East Coast type vibe. Some cool sounds there, especially you guys are just starting out. I, I would say that the coolest thing is just being able to hear and see what's going on in this region. So let's look at Maurice. Uh, I actually really like Maurice. Uh, it's basically boom bap, so it's like breaks and chops from vinyl records. I thought it was really cool. So there are some really cool actual presets in him. So I think that's a strong point of it, as well as the electronic ones are probably some of the best as well. So let's I'll just keep it on this electronic for now. But when you open it, you get this screen. So if you've used, I'm not going to go over all this because that is more tailored towards uh, the, you know, the drum, just the uh, drummer in general inside of Logic. It's not exclusive to the drum machine designer. So I do want to start talking about the drum machine designer and what's actually going on. So when you load it, 
you will see that you get all these effects on it. So let's actually open up the drum machine designer. Now basically all this window is, is a really nice fancy way of showing you what's going on in uh, Ultrabeat, which is a really ugly looking outdated plugin. So this isn't a new uh, plugin per se, it's basically wrapping all of this into a really nice layout and giving you what you see here. First thing I did when I opened this was trying, I tried dragging and dropping a sample onto the cells, which you cannot do. So that was kind of disappointing, but hopefully they can amend that in an update, but they may not be able to because all this is wrapped to Ultrabeat. But when you click on and open it, you will see this screen and you'll see where it says controls and sends. And then you have these little dots and toggle arrows, two different pages. So anytime you click in a sample, what you see down here will change. So now it's the effects that are associated with that sample. So when I click on snare, and you'll see here, all of this is changing because this is coming from a multi-output instance of Ultrabeat. So you can see these changing, right? And then here's all the effects that these macro controls are, are being triggered, are, are tied to. So when you click back up on this top part, this top bar, you'll be back on the control sends, kind of the main, I guess the main view here. And you have mix, so you can turn down your uh, snares and claps. Now the only annoying thing about this is when you click on it, right, you're going to go back to this view where, with the effects on it. So you, you basically have to have it being played in your, uh, in your, your DAW, or you have to play it on your keyboard. But that's how you can control quickly, like once it's playing, You can turn groups off. So that's pretty cool because once you actually have your groove laid down, it's a really simple way of mixing it, which I thought was effective. And then you have the effects that you can you can see here, and it's different for every kit. And the sends are pretty cool. So let's let's keep playing this. So I was turning up the reverb for all the snares. Let's turn up the reverb for the hi hat. And you delay. So it's set up to groups, which is really cool. I think that's pretty, um, I don't know, it's, it, it's a pretty intuitive way to do it. So as you're kind of scratching things out, you can get a good rough mix on things. So let's start, let's actually go into uh, the kit I made now. So I'm gonna delete this track and we'll, we'll open up this one. So let's open up the Drum Machine Designer and let's actually start looking at the samples and how I loaded them in. So if you want to load your own custom samples inside of Drum Machine Designer, you have to click on one of the cells and you'll have to go to Ultra Beat. So you'll notice here when I click on snare or any of the sample cells except kick one, it'll just say UB and then a number, or two numbers rather. That is st that stands for Ultra Beat and then the output, right? So when you click on kick though, you'll notice it actually says Ultra Beat. And that is what is triggering all of these sounds. So let's move this over. Now, Ultra Beat's hideous looking. They haven't updated this. Apple hasn't updated this since I've been using Logic. So I, I don't know if it's ever gotten a facelift. But it's it's kind of hard to see what's going on. If you guys aren't Ultra Beat users, you're going to be like, what the heck is this? If you guys are Ultra Beat users, you'll feel at home. So let me run through this real quick. These These green sliders here that like you can turn up and down, basically. These are your samples. See where it says kick? Right? And when you click on these, they won't play. They'll just highlight the different parameters that are making up that sample or the different effects or whatever you have going on inside of Ultra Beat. These gray tabs, which should have definitely been made to look like piano notes because that's what they are. It should have been white and black instead of gray. Those are how you can play the kick. So here's my kick that I have loaded up. It's a sample from um, Vandalism, actually. And here's, a, here's one of my own snares. Here's one of my claps. So that's how you can kind of audition them. So there's the kick. So like I said, this is just wrapping to Ultra Beat. It's a really nice way of actually dealing with Ultra Beat visually. So there's everything that's going on. Now, to load your own samples, what you do is you click on one of these cells inside of Ultra Beat. And you find one of your samples. So let's load up a Melbourne style clap. Click on it and you can just drag it into this part right here and it'll change. Right, and then you can, this is how you control your volume inside of Ultra Beat. There are definitely going to be tutorials out there for Ultra Beat. I'm not going to cover all of that 
in this video because it this is mainly just for drum machine designer, but I do have to touch on it a little bit just to kind of you know be able to talk about what's going on. So there's how you can start to load your own samples. You have to do it inside of the Ultra Beat plugin. Now let's talk about making grooves. So this is one of my favorite elements of the drum machine designer for sure. What you do is you open up your drum machine designer and right click on your track. So control click and hit create track. And as you do that, it'll make kick big room track. And what I did was I just recorded my kick. So let me get back to my EDM tempo. Let's do 125. All right, so there is my kick, and then I quantized in the uh, piano roll. Now here's the really cool thing. When you zoom all the way out, you'll just see keys. But as you zoom in on these, this actually says kick. That's, that's freaking awesome. So that is a new update for just uh, Logic X, Logic 10.1 for Logic X. It, that's so helpful. I mean, it's, it's so nice to actually just visually be able to be like, okay, there's that, there's that. You don't have to remember your layout. So I love that. All right, and then I went to my snare and I did the same, same function. I right clicked, hit create track, and then I played my snare. So let me unmute this track. And you'll notice there's, I'm, you can see here, it's, it's, uh, it visually shows you what samples are hitting. You can see it's clap and snare. So you, the cool thing is you're not shackled or constrained to just playing whatever you created the track on. So I, I hit right click and created the track for snare, big room, but it's also playing, let me zoom in, on, let me zoom out on this. It's also playing my uh, clap right there. So let's go back to this real quick. And you'll see that there is the uh, samples. So uh, what what that allows you to do is it allows you to actually play around with everything that's going on. So if you highlight all of these, it'll have all of the MIDI info at once. Now, something I did notice is on this first track, it'll tell you the names of your your uh, what's going on. Like it'll say what the sample is. On these, it won't for some reason, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's something that I just haven't figured out, or I don't know if it has to be on the same track. I'm not sure yet, but if I copy and paste these into this, it will definitely be there. See, you have the, everything that's coming from Ultrabeat, but that would take away the, the function of having the multi-output and having everything on an individual track, which makes mixing 10 times easier. So then I recorded some hi-hats and just percussion and I have this now another cool thing about this is when you start to load up into individual tracks when you're creating your grooves you'll see here that you can load up your own effects and things like that so on the snare for instance I loaded up a channel EQ and cut out some frequencies I didn't want and I loaded up uh, an instance of the uh, vengeance transient shaper as well as the vengeance reverb so that's what's doing the reverb on the snare I turned off the reverb inside of drum, the drum machine designer. But I like that it's, it's already on its own track, so it's kind of, for me, I can mix as I go a little bit. And it, that's nice, because I don't have to stem anything. I did the same thing uh, with the hi-hats as well. So you, as you guys can see, if you guys are just starting out to Logic, or you might be thinking of buying it, I'd say this is a great update to have. Uh, the drum machine designer is really nice. And for those of you who might use a machine or a contact or whatever, the, this might be a little bit friendlier for EDM style drums. So definitely check it out. There's some cool features. And if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And, and thank you for watching. I'll be putting out some more videos uh, each month this year in 2015, or I'll be trying to, so don't hold me to that. But hopefully I'll get a few more of these style videos out as the year progresses. So I'll see you next time.